Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Um, welcome to, I suppose this week's devotional uh, could be considered, um, I don't know, devotional in the wild or something like that. I am at the Hopkins parking garage. I'm waiting for Kristen. She's in one of her appointments and I thought um, we'd look at some First Corinthians together. And so I'm going to actually flash the scriptures up on the page. I know that my aesthetic isn't the most appealing. And so um, most of the time you'll see the scriptures and you may hear some things. That's just welcome to the parking garage. So I'm going to go ahead and flash our scripture up and we will, um, we will talk through it. All right, guys. Um, so today we're, we're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to be looking at verses 12 through 20. And 12 through 20 are part of a longer section that's dealing with sexual immorality and marriage issues. And um, as we know, the Corinthians were a bit of a mess, right? And so um, it only fits that sexuality would become a key issue in Corinth. Corinth has had one of the one of the marvels of the ancient world was their temple. Um, they had a temple of Epaphrodite there that the idea of this temple was you would you would go to worship. She was a fertility god of sorts. And this is way oversimplifying the ancient world. Um, so part of her worship was that you would worship through prostitute worship. You would go to be with a prostitute. Um, so a lot of issues that Paul's going to cover basically for the next like two or three chapters will relate back to the sexual ethic. But he begins here in verse 12. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food is for the stomach and stomach is for the food, but God will do away with them both. For the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. God raised up or God raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Don't you know that our bodies are part of Christ's body? So should I take part of Christ's body and make it part of a prostitute? Absolutely not. Don't you know that anyone joined to a prostitute is one body with her? For scripture says the two will become one flesh. But anyone joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the person who commits sexual or who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. Don't you know that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. So it's talking, this passage is talking about sexual immorality, but it's actually dealing with this greater theme as you see at the end of, get my pen up here. Um, so glorify God with your body. It's this idea of my physicality does impact my spirituality. This is really important in our COVID day and age. There's a sentiment that goes around that um, I can ignore what happens to my body because it's temporary. And yes, it's true that we are temporarily here, but your body is inter intricately linked to who you are. This is important for the resurrection, as we're going to see later in chapter 15, that we believe in a bodily resurrection, which means your body matters. So Paul is going to talk about what we do with the body and how that relates to spirituality. Here in verses 12 and 13, we get what are called slogans. These are thought to be things that the Corinthians were saying, that Paul is grabbing their words and quoting it back to them. Everything is permissible to me. We see this twice. And then we have this other one of uh, food is for the stomach and stomach is for the food. Um, these are slogans. So Paul is not saying to you and I, for instance, everything is permissible. You should do anything. Um, instead, what he's saying is everything is permissible for me, but, right? But. So everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Corinthians, yes, you're free in Christ, but you need to think not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but I will not be mastered by anything. I love this language of not being mastered by anything 
because as we're going to see later, our master is God and our master is Christ. We can often make excuses for our sin because of our Christian freedom and we end up mastered by that sin. We end up enslaved by it. Um, so if you are going to underline a verse, these are two verses that are great. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And oftentimes the thing that you think you can do will enslave you. It will own you. And then he has the food is for the stomach and the stomach is for food. This, this slogan of, well, of course I'm going to do it. I can do it. And I should do it because I can do it. And God will do away with both of them. I love that he takes this idea of I can do what I want. I can be what I want, blah, blah, blah. And throws it all out the window here in these first couple of verses. And then hits the core issue. However, the body, I love this. They've been saying the body is okay to do what it wants. The body is not for sexual immorality. But for the Lord. Your body, as we see down in verse 20, you were bought for a price. Verse 19, you are not your own. Your body, if you are a Christian, your body is dedicated to the Lord. Your body is for the Lord's use. Sexual immorality does not fall into that. What was very likely happening was the Corinthians thought that they, because they had this higher, this higher state, this higher understanding of life, they seem to have thought that they could just do whatever. I have this freedom and I'm going to take my freedom and run with it. Paul says you don't have that kind of freedom. That's not how freedom works. Freedom is that you are free from your sin. Not this idea that you can do whatever you want. Because the Lord has your body. The, the Lord owns it. The Lord uses your body. So he flips the whole script on them and says, yes, you have Christian freedom, but... That doesn't mean that you're just free to do whatever you want. Verse 14, God raised up the Lord. So the resurrection is coming in here. God raised up the Lord and will raise us up by his power. So the body is becoming intricately tied to the theology of the Corinthians. What you do with your body matters. What you put into your body matters. How you treat your body matters because it belongs to God. Verse 15, don't you know? that your bodies are part of Christ's body. So now he's not just saying it's important, but he's actually bringing it into the church. What happens with your body, what you do with it does matter. And he's specifically speaking in the realm of sexual immorality here, though I do see where this would expand out to other areas of our lives. Verse uh, 15, the second bit here, or sorry, the start. Don't you know that your bodies are part of Christ's body? So should I take part of Christ's body and make it part of a prostitute? Absolutely not. No, do not do that. Hands down, don't do it. Then verse 16. Don't you know that anyone joined to a prostitute is one body with her? For scripture says the two will become one flesh. Here, Paul is bringing in Genesis right and he's bringing in marriage which is where the passages are going to go towards is towards the discussion of marriage he's saying that when you sin your sin directly affects christ what you do with your body affects christ and affects christ's body um your sin is not isolated from christ so when you do something when you um commit sexual immorality this affects christ this isn't just you we're talking about anymore the christian life is a call to no longer live your own life. You are now part of something much larger. And Paul is hitting that very hard. He's saying there's a divine mandate. There's a structure that sexuality fits in. Sex within the context of, of um, heterosexual marriage is a good thing. That's what God designed. Anything outside of that falls into this sexual immorality. But anyone joined to the Lord is one spirit of him. So then Paul one-ups this by saying, look, if you're in the Lord, just like for a married couple, you're one flesh. If you're with the Lord, you're one spirit with him. You cannot escape the Lord. So when you sin, you affect him. So what do you do about this? Suppose you catch yourself. You're in sexual immorality. What do you do? Flee from it. Run away. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits 
is outside the body, but the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. This is relying on the idea of the marriage covenant and the model and what that sets up for us and the way that pushes and reflects our theology of how we relate with the Lord. We're in covenant with the Lord. And what we do with our body, when we, when we commit sexual immorality, we are linking with someone else. And in that link, you are then affecting the body of Christ. You're affecting Christ's work. Verse 19, don't you know, I love how mean he is. Don't you know, you should know this. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Who or whom you have from God. So your body is this temple, which remember they're using cultic prostitute worship that would be at the temple is very likely influencing them here. And they're saying your body is not a temple for that. Your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. Um, I don't know. I know this is a side remark. I know that this discussion of the temple of the Holy Spirit can be brought up for a lot of different contexts. Keep in mind that the context that it's talking about here is um, related to this outside practice, right? This outside worship practice. So when I'm referring to your body as a temple of the Holy Spirit, we're referring to outside worship, things that affect the worship of Christ. So try not to use this verse just willy-nilly on everybody for anything. We're talking here specifically about worship and about um, how that falls in line. Then we have this idea of um, you have the Holy Spirit from God. You are not your own for you were bought at a price and the price was the cross, right? That Christ purchased us for his purposes. Therefore, don't just do whatever you want. Glorify God with your body. We're going to get later in um, chapter 10, we're going to get whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to God's glory. Our life must be centered on this idea of glorifying God, on worshiping him and on setting him as the highest, giving him the due credit and living in a way that reflects that. So, this week is if you are committing sexual immorality, right? Not just, um, not just actually physically engaging in sexual immorality with another person, but if you're engaging in por pornography, if you're engaging in whatever it may be, um, if your own marriage is not being taken care of, right? There's a lot of areas that this falls into. Flee from it, as it says, flee so that you can glorify God with your body. Now, if you're not in that boat, if you're not committing sexual immorality, it's still a lot of weight to this passage. You need to glorify God with your body. You're, you need to set it in your mind, not just that, oh, I'm, I'm going to try to be a good person by not doing these things. I have to start with the mindset, I'm going to glorify God with my body. My body matters. Am I using it for God? So that's this week's passage. We're going to move forward into chap I believe chapter seven next week. So um, thank you for joining, and I hope you thanks for joining me in my parking garage, and uh, I hope you guys have a great day.